So good morning, active traders. Welcome to a more professional, intelligent approach to day trading the markets. I'm Ken Calhoun, president of the original Day Trading University, the first university site. You know, a lot of people ripped off the idea, but I'm the original Day Trading University, trading the open, trade mastery, et cetera. Great to see so many new faces here. It's always all information for educational use only. Learn in a safe, intelligent learning environment. I wanted to say thanks, first of all, to all of you for being here. It's a real pleasure having another epic turnout. We're up at 1570, so over 1500 people registered. So thank you for uh, taking time out of your morning to be here. These are our alerts for the day. In the green column, this is resistance. We go long if it goes over the price action. So these are not exit targets. These are entry signals uh, to paper trade and learn from. So RDHL, for example, we want to go long if it bounces over this 870. Now, it may well do so between now and 930. We don't take alerts if they hit pre-market, with rare exception. Uh, so if it bounces and chops in this region, I'll probably push it back up to 920. But for now, we'll leave it where it's at. Let's cycle through our charts and see what we've got up to bat for today. First thing we always do is take a look at the market and the market internals. Our futures are relatively strong and you can see our S&P, the spiders ETF of the S&P is a gap continuation. So we like gap runners, which is great. Pulling back off its earlier highs, we'll see if it's able to reclaim the 308 later as we get ready for the opening bell. The best ETF chart out there would therefore be TQQ, though it's a little pricey now, way up here at 73 a share. Another great chart is UGAS. This is one that I got stopped out on Friday. I bought here and got stopped out right there, got shaken out. But wish I, I'm in small shares on a swing trade. I wish I had kept all 200 shares. I'd be up $800. But anyway. Uh, UGAS has a nice gap continuation, parked right above the previous day's high, well, actually two points up from 17 up to 19. It's not too extended. You know, if it was over, you know, three points, if it was up over 20 or 21, I'd say it might do a big fade or drop. But it still looks pretty healthy for a continuation. The thing I like about UGAS big pictures, it's one of these much beaten down stocks that are ETFs that had been priced much higher. Way up here this time last year was 200 a share. Now on sale for the far sale price of less than $20. So anyway, this is a nice gap runner setup. We'll see if you guys is able to break north of 19.8 is our long trigger. So we go long if and only if it gets over 19.8. And an idea that I'm um, thankful to a reviewer Emmett for mentioning uh, was maybe do single share trading because with zero commissions, it, why not, right? It doesn't cost you anything. So learning here for compliance reasons after requiring the child to do paper trading only, but on your own independently or whatever you want to do, uh, you may want to start with small shares, right? And that does for you a few things. Instead of the gung-ho guys who are misleading people saying trade thousands of shares of $2 stocks, which blows up people's accounts routinely. And I inherit a lot of them because I say it's such a relief. I'm not out there trying to say after the fact I traded thousands of shares of a $3 stock and everybody's playing hot potato trying to get an order fill and all that kind of bull honky. Instead, I advocate a much safer, smaller, conservative approach where you may want to start off with just, you know, to learn the chart patterns, you know, you may want to start off with just one share or five shares or 10 shares. Uh, without any commission load, you know, it doesn't cost you hardly anything, even if you get stopped out 100% of the time on a $5, I'm sorry, a five share trade, it might cost you $5 with a one point stop. So big whoop, right? And I advocate stops of around 40 cents or, or, or tighter, usually 10 or 20 cents is my, 20 cents is a sweet spot for a stop loss for, that's what I took uh, in this guy on uh, on Friday, because I used a 25 cent stop, I think I was in at 85 out at 60, something like that. Anyway, the point is, yeah, I was in at 85 out at 60. And then of course, later in the day when I was getting my snow tires put on, 
I wasn't here and one of the rare times I wasn't here in front of my monitors and of course it runs up a point without me. I knew that was going to happen so I just had a feeling. Anytime it's kind of like kind of like destiny whenever you got to go to a doctor's appointment or go do something and you're away from the monitors something will run up without you so you take it with a grain of salt. What are some other good charts today? Well, we, the most active, actually now CHFS is the most active, but I'm not going to cover a dollar penny stock type thing. CRC is a highly active instrument. It's got a nice small gap kind of a setup here. I don't know why it's being, it's already 41,400 shares traded so far today, but there's no movement. So if you have high volume, which for pre-market 40,000 shares is moderately high volume, but no motion, you know, I wouldn't be too excited about it. We'll take a shot if it breaks over nine though. Hey, Wendy asking about UWT. I'm long UWT and Gush. I like Gush better because it's cheaper and it's got more percentage range. But yeah, that's a great chart, thanks. We will add that to the list. Thanks for the heads up. Wendy's one of our regular members, and there's so many smart people like Wendy in the live room. I really appreciate it because you folks ask about great charts that often have good price action. Even though it's an ETF, I'm out of space here, so I'm going to park it right there. But that's how to play crude to the long side. Gush is probably also looking good too. I like Gush for a swing trade. I'm in from higher, just in the just over three. We use 1220 as a long and a loss of the previous day's high at say 1120 on the short. But yeah, good call. That's tradable. In fact, let's put that right here. Nice gap. One thing to pay attention to as an active day trader is to look for the most recent price action as we get close to the opening bell. And as I teach my traders around the world, we like to see at least three one minute green candles progress on their way up. Now, normally, by the way, I don't show my face during the live room sessions because I don't feel like getting my hair and shirt on and all that kind of crap. So, uh, I mean, unless everybody wants me to, I can, I can oblige and do that, but I don't think having my face adds that much value to the the price action narration, I think the voice and the specifics of the triggers and the entries and exits is the most valuable. But hey, be that as it may, you can see me this morning. So, uh, but yeah, it's a nice chart. I like that one. I'll, I'd hit that. In fact, I will hit that. Let's. I'm just going to do a 20 share order to buy with the stop limit at that trigger that I've got. I always use my own triggers, by the way. I never front run anyone. I show with the, the DOM, my PL proof, the entries and the share size, and when I take stops, which is often, and when I make wins, that's often as well. I'm always uh, using the same triggers that I put here. Unlike the guys who run momentum rooms that don't tell people where to get in ahead of time and I'll leave people in the, in the, flying blind and then uh, trying to chase, uh, that's not a professional way to teach. It's much smarter and more intelligent and more helpful, I think, to people to tell them where the entries are half an hour before the opening bell, right? That way you've got more than enough time to develop your own personal trading plan based on what I've got there. But thanks, Wendy, I will take the shot. I'll let, I'm just doing 20 shares, little baby traded 1220. And the stop, I'm gonna have to put down 1120. That's behind, it's right under the close of Friday, but yeah, it's a great chart looking good. So many folks here, thank you all for being here. And amazingly, none of my regular members have emailed me saying, What's the link to the open house room? So that's good. I'm refreshing my Fidelity page here. I trade with the Trader's Workstation in my upper monitor there, but 
so that you guys can see what I'm doing, I also run my thing there. So I put in that order for the UWT. Thanks, Wendy. Oh, that's a great chart. That's one of the best charts of the day, so thank you. That one and you guys are the two best ETF charts. And unlike other places, we do cover ETFs because oftentimes those provide superior trading opportunities to individual stocks, which are very much hit and miss individual, uh, you know, whatever's hot on the day, that's one way to day trade. Uh, an intelligent way to day trade is not only do that, but also trade instruments that you're familiar with, which is a core of maybe five or six ETFs, right? So I've got these orders set up, little tiny trades. And again, with no commissions, why not just learn by trading very small share size, right? That way you can get more experience and accelerate your progress without the risk of thousands of shares. And again, I, I highly advocate using either TD Ameritrade or Fidelity as a broker. Uh, and if Interactive Brokers ever gets back to giving away the TW or ever gets to where they include the regular TWS for free, I'll go back to recommending IB. But for now, Ameritrade would be number one, uh, Fidelity number two. And never use an overseas broker in the Bahamas unless you want lots of trouble. Like SureTrade went out of business, right? So just saying, the writing's on the wall. And I've been telling traders for years, never try and get around the pattern day trading rule by trading with an overseas broker. The SEC, the IRS uh, is probably not in favor of that. You'll probably get in trouble. Uh, not to mention there's no protection on your account if they decide to take your money and run. They're down in a tropical island. So good luck in dealing with that. You should be deeply concerned if you've got a Bahamas-based broker. You should never do that. Anyway, I'm trying to keep you guys safe, right? That's my USP, what, my distinctive, what sets me apart from other educators is my number one thing is trying to keep you guys safe. Like physicians, I was pre-med at UCLA. I got washed out with organic chemistry. It was too tough for me. I couldn't hang with organic chemistry. It's just not enough real world stuff, but do no harm. The Hippocratic Oath from uh, doctors and as an educator, I try and do the same. The main thing is warn you guys about what's dangerous and keep you out of trouble. So anyway, what's hot, what's not? We got about 10 minutes till the bell. CRC is perched for a breakout. I like the fact that it's holding its own on a gap up today. Really nice chart pattern. US Steel not as good because the current price action is under the previous day's high, but it was a big gainer on Friday, so it is merit does merit consideration. Pinterest was a nice big winner for us on Friday. The live room I covered the pivot on this, nailed it for my traders. For those of you who were there, you remember, right? We nailed it for, for you guys, the PI and Pinterest on the bounce. WMGI, a nice gap up with a descending triangle, right? That's a descending triangle pattern. So it's a little bearish. Want to go short if it loses 2850. And even if you don't short, at least learn from the price action. Lyft is trying to drive up to new highs here, uh, driving off the freeway 43.34 or so, 43.32 looks to be the exact resistance. We don't care about it till it breaks over 43 and a half. So if it gets over that, the long trigger is to go long over 43.7. Micron's a refreshingly intelligent, uh, like me, refreshingly intelligent in a sea of incompetent people in the trading industry. And my colleagues are smart people, but most of the people running chat rooms, not so much. Anyway, uh, a Micron looks good, a nice 45 degree angle breakout on the gap, gap runner. We'll see if it breaks north of 49.7, that's the long trigger. AMD also gapping, but it's giving some back. So it's a little bearish recently, right? AMD, the long trigger is 35.6. RDHL, that one's a pretty good volatility play. I'm not a big fan of these under $10 stocks, but hey, maybe worth a shot if it gets north of 8.7 on the open. It's making a little bullish cut pattern right here, trying to get ready for a pivot. Hey, thanks, Rich. Hey, good to see you, man. And I did listen to that... Uh, Turrentine Impressions. Thank you. It was familiar, too. I'd heard that one before. The 1970 YouTube recording was really good. Hey, Wendy. KPTI. 
not familiar with that one, but let's take a quick peek and see if it looks good. Nah, the volume's not great on it. It's okay though. I mean, maybe if it breaks 1430 or so, I would just add 20 cents to the high. But yeah, it's, it's a gapper, so. We follow up with our ETF, so I like your UWT a lot better. And I will definitely trade that chart. That's a great chart, so thank you. It's nice, clean. It's got a 45 degree angle previous days. Friday price action followed by a gap up. This is how to play crude long. UWT is our favorite long oil ETF that we cover uh, every week in the live room. DWT is the inverse of it. It's got a nice little bullish cup, and I like the recent strength with green candles up near the high. We use whole number resistance, so we don't want to buy here. This would not be a good place to buy, but if it gets over 12, I'll buy some at 12.20. So time for us all to collectively get a swig of coffee and get alert for today's markets. Hot black coffee is a trader's best friend. Well, that and tight risk management. Always good to keep a, I was watching Black Sails again, a really good big budget pirate TV series and keep a keen weather eye out in the crow's nest and what's going on with the market before the opening bell. And we've got really strong buyers in the house here. We've got a gap continuation in the SPY that's stronger than I've seen in quite some time. So we do have quite a lot of buying pressure out there to work with. So we'll see which way things run in today's markets. Our T triple Q obviously also looking pretty healthy. But if the market takes a dump, that's a good technical term, takes a dump. If the market rolls over and sells off, you want to go long in the inverse instruments that I trade regularly, like S triple Q and VXX and whatnot. They don't look too healthy right now, so they take a pass until they take out at least a high of day pre-market move. The long trigger in S triple Q is long if it gets way up over 2740. You could hit it earlier, say 27 and a quarter if you want, but I'd, I'd wait till the 40. Be a little cautious on bounces. I like to go directionally and where, where the strength is. So I like to buy what's going up and sell what's going down. Unless it's an extreme oversold or extreme overbought. Anyways, welcome friends to our live room here at Trading Open. I'm Ken Calhoun. Our market opens in just around eight minutes. So a little bit of time to Oh, stretch, take a look at the charts. For those of you who are new, let me do you a quick walkthrough of uh, the charts here. I like to have a large two-day, one-minute chart. Frequently, we'll zoom in on the one-day, one-minute chart just to get a close-up look on price action, along with a large tape, a time and sales window. Also, I often have thumbnail charts of the strongest five charts here so we can See who's running up lately. And also a new addition and an and enhancement is two uh, custom charts that I designed over here. One is the trend. You won't see anything on this chart until after 930, but the arms index, also known as the trend, is a key indicator of buying or selling pressure. If the index is, if the trend is under one, it's a long bias and they're buying. If the trend's over one, it's a short bias and they're selling. And I also use a this is the SPY, the spiders chart, four one-minute candles to give us directional bias. Like say, are they all green or are they all red? Or are they chopping around? You know, if we see all green candles lighted up, that tells us let's be a little more aggressive on our long entries. Or if we're currently long and we start to see a lot of red over there and the chart starts to pull back, that tells us to get out of the trade. So that's something that's unique that I developed and invented specifically for all of my traders Hundreds of folks from around the world here trading the open. So thank you for being here. We've got over a thousand guests here, so who've registered. So thanks to all of you for being here. Currently up at 1570. Let me refresh that and see if that number has gone up. I'm just curious. Did we break 1570 resistance? How many traders are registered here? It's called social proof. You're in the right place for professional day trading. Good, thoughtful, intelligent, step-by-step -step 
methodology that actually makes sense. As opposed to small cap under $10 thousands of shares gambling moron approach. They were up a few. I hit the refresh button and we're, <coughs> excuse me, 1573. So thanks to the over 1500 of you who've registered. I appreciate it. A really big turnout. Wow. A lot of here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask any question you want. You know, I'm here to help. You know, I'm very honest and very transparent about what I do here. So I do not claim to be making $20,000 a day trading a $3 stock. And neither does anyone else ask to see tax return proof, as I have shown, from anybody trying to claim to make thousands of dollars trading low float under $10 stocks. You won't see any tax return because it's smoke and mirrors. They're not telling you the truth. So. Tax returns, that's what counts. Hey, Rich. Yeah, you're right, yeah, train mode it. I looked it up, you're right. Yeah, it was an old train. So what, okay, I like Naima, that's my favorite. Bah, bah, da, bah, 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 bah. It's a haunting melody. Harlem Nocturne, Naima, and Angel Eyes are my three favorite slow songs I use for long tone practice. Those of you wondering what the heck I'm talking about, I got one of my traders who's a fellow jazz aficionado, which I appreciate. I got a lot of, I've got pilots, I've got engineers, I've got doctors, I've got physicians, I've got people from all walks of life here. And it's great to see all of you here. So UWT looks great. So thanks, Wendy. That's the best chart. That's So far, that's the strongest chart of the day. That's the best chart showing evidence of buying right before the bell. That's one thing to keep an eye out on too, folks, is, you know, Where's the green? Show me the money, right? So we're going to see green candles right before 930. And see where things run. For more on candles, be sure to learn from my longtime colleague, Steve Nissen, only at candle charts. Don't try and learn candles from anyone else because they all just basically tried to copy Steve badly. So like so many people try to copy me badly, right? It's one of the, one of my buddies, a consultant said, it's the price of being at the top of the, Top of the chain, you get you get knocked off and people copy. But anyway, learn candles from Nissen because they work. Let's see what else is going on. Anybody getting some heat? We got just around four minutes, just under under four minutes before the bell here. WMGA, WMGI is more likely a short play than a long. You can see the short trigger is 27.8. If you look right here, the short triggers are in red. So we go short if and only if it gets under that. I use a box trading range approach like any professional trader does. You know, if you're hedging or you're looking at long and shorts, even if you don't short, it's still smart to be aware of where a professional trader would short it and also where the long trigger would be. So you've got specific intel. You know, I've got your six, I've got your 12. The long triggers and the short triggers um, up to bat. Sometimes I use military talks. I'm here in Colorado Springs and I have a lot of buddies in military and law enforcement. A tremendous amount of respect for. Anyway, Lyft is trying to lift up. It's not doing anything lately though. Like that song by Janet Jackson, what have you done for me lately? What's price action done lately? Okay, Micron's going up. Micron looks healthy. Long triggers 49.7. AMD's Gap fill, it's going back down to the previous day's high, not getting new buyers. RDHL, not yet at the 8.7 long trigger. See, so the other rooms would only give you two or three charts and that's it, very limited. A professional trader, you trade lots of different instruments, you throw a lot of darts, let the chips fall where they may, keep really super tight stops and that buys you the opportunity to trade many different instruments. So. Earlier this year, I was doing as many as 40 to 60 day trades a day. I've calmed down a little bit since then, be much more selective because I want to have time to teach everyone. CEI is the worst chart out there, but eh, maybe worth a shot if it bounces over 440. But I'm not going to make that an official call because personally, I wouldn't be trading this instrument. Now, of course, watch this one be the one that runs up like to seven without us. Well, I would use 440 as a long trigger for that guy. Following up with our ETFs, you can see UGAS still looks 
healthy, it's climbing up to new highs. 19.8 is our long term. This is an inverse head and shoulders slash bullish cut pattern. And for more on patterns that work, you may want to see my articles, award-winning, number one rated articles and technical analysis of stocks and commodities. And please vote for me in the October issue for the Reader's Choice Award. It'd be great to be voted number one again in the world. But having got that feather in my cap, anything else is icing on the cake. You guys ready? We got just around 50 seconds, under one minute till today's opening bell. Let's lock and load. Let's get ready for our mission of today. Mission launch in 40 seconds. Wheels up in 30. I live near the Air Force Academy. I got buddies that say, I'm not a top gun, but I know guys who are, so it's a, All right, traders, we got just over 15 seconds till today's opening bell. And see, I give you specific charts and specific entries long before the bell, right? So now it's just a matter of following through and seeing which ones hit first, managing entries and exits and the rest of it. Game on, three, two, one, zero. Ding, 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 ding. Markets are open for business. Let's crush Wall Street. Let's kick Wall Street's butt. Let's profit from what's going on here. Well, thanks, Phil, for the heads up on KPTI, UNGI. Well, thanks for the heads up on WNGI, Bob. W told me it's a buyout. Kind of like, what was that other one? There was another one that was bought out recently. So if it's a buyout, it's probably not going to go anywhere, right? So sometimes you see those gaps. Usually buyout gaps are gaps that just kind of flatline at the tender price, right? In the meantime, Trader Wendy's pick UWT's looking healthy. Worth considering along if it gets somewhere over 12. Now I'm going to buy it at, what's my trigger? At 1220. But you know, you might want to take a shot at 1190 or 12, or 12.05, or 12.10. Contrary to popular belief, the truth of the matter, as a guy who's traded millions of dollars worth of this stuff over the last 20 years, is the specific entry doesn't matter nearly as much as the exit, right? Whether you go in long at 11.95, or 12, or 12.05, or 12.10, or 12.20, that doesn't really matter as much as keeping a tight stop. So you may want to experiment with that. That's one variable to play around with, is which of these entries make the most sense. AMD is coming to life and so is Micron. So AMD high of day breakout, that's by the way what the green highlight behind the price is, is high of day and red is low of day. So AMD is headed north, long triggers 35.6. Market those looking red. Look in the lower right. See that big honking red candle? That's an engulfing red candle. We may see some selling pressure on the open. I'm starting to see S triple Q light it up. I alone in the trading industry teach people how to trade the inverses on a day trading basis every single day. So learn from me. I know what the heck I'm talking about. 27, you might want to take a shot at 27.20. Momentum Traders 27.20 is our earliest long. I know that's just a dime away. We may see an open range breakdown in the market. So for that reason, this, this thing goes up when the stock market goes down. So 2720, and then again at 40 might make sense. I'm gonna wait till 40 myself, but you guys might wanna take a shot a bit earlier. You guys up 0.4, poised for a breakout. It's got a bullish cup. Our long trigger on uh, you guys is 19.8. You know what, I'm gonna tighten that up to 1960. Let me know if any of you see anything that's starting to hit and run. I'm still gonna, I'm gonna leave my actual trade in place at the 1980, but you guys might wanna get in earlier. And again, here's 100% of my order book for today. Little itty bitty, you know, five and 20 shares 
testing things out and some stop losses on some of my inverses that are sadly going down. Boohoo. At some point, they're going to bounce, right? Hope springs eternal. But intelligent trading is scaling out on the way down on the inverses because I don't want to, you know, be in TVIX at, you know, 15 and have it go down to five, right? I've been scaling out of it. AMD is on the way up. CRC is also breaking the new highs. Long trigger in CRC is imminent at 9.30. What a star. That was the most active traded for a lot of the morning until recently. Anyway, CRC, I'm sorry. Yeah, CRC, right? Long trigger CRC is at 9.3. Now, it's always best to see a bull flag or a small pullback right before the breakout. No, you don't want to chase things. If they just blindly straight move up, it's muscle males, uh, uh, more or less. Sometimes it'll break and run, sometimes not. It's I won't use the word safer, but safer and smarter to wait for a small pullback and then the breakout, right? Kind of like AMD. I like this pullback in AMD. Our long trigger is up at 35.6. Now, how many of you have ever been stopped out by false breakouts? We all have, right? It's part of our life. That's what we have to deal with. Uh, what I teach here at Trading the Open, and thanks to all of you for being here, is how to avoid false breakouts as our goal by using more intelligent entry triggers that aren't just blind momentum plays. So, for example, you know, traders who just bought the high of day breakout in AMD are going boo freaking who. But we didn't get in because my long trigger is way up at 35.6, right? An intelligent trigger. As a member, you can look forward to this level of intelligent insight as well as specifics called out live. Now, Micron's looking better than AMD. Long trigger, I'm going to hit it at, I'd hit that at 49.7. I got ordered just by a nickel. I'm just buying five shares just for kicks and giggles, but 49.7, the long trigger. I urge you to trade small, trade often, like Sosnoff says, trade small size while you're learning. And the great thing about zero commissions is that doesn't cost you much. You know, you can trade five shares in and out and it doesn't cost you anything other than the stop if you're wrong. You can use even a whole one point stop and it only costs you $5 total. That's amazing. And enjoy it while it lasts. Hopefully we don't get a certain political party in power next year that will pass some financial transaction tax. Anyway, Lyft trying to take on new has now 43.7 hit We'll see if it pulls back or not. Some of these other guys all looking pretty red, right? CEI, gap and crap, gap and trap. RDHL, our long trigger is 8.7. That never hit. It's bouncing off the whole number here. 780 is a short. Let's tighten up the bounce trigger from 870, which you can still use, by the way, as a position sizing or add on trade. Right, that's very intelligent to have. So you put on your first alert, your first trade signal, uh, and let's say the thing goes down and never does hit it, but now it's starting to bounce. You can put a, a earlier entry in on this at a place that makes sense. Let's do 8.30, and then again at 8.70. So we go long in RDHL if and only if it gets over 8.3, and then you can buy again if it gets over 8.7. Or if it just keeps going down, we short at 7.80, right? So we've got our trading plan lined up. All right, Rich. Yeah, Lyft looks like it's in trouble. You know, when TVX gets to a buck, I'm buying it too. You and me, you and me both. Let's see what else is going on. Actually, they're likely to reverse split it if it stays under 10 any length of time. They always do. They've done that eight times so far, so probably... But they're probably going to give it a little more time to see if it ever bounces. And if it doesn't, they'll reverse split. And then it'll be way up at 40 or 50, probably 10 for one. So it'll, anyway, you guys looks good for a breakout, a bullish cut pattern. We'll see if it keeps going up. UWT looks healthy. Our long trigger is up at 1220. We expect the resistance at 12. And you don't ever want to buy right under a whole number unless you've got a really good reason. So we're waiting for it to break out to new highs. Big picture, the stock market's doing nothing, right? 
it's a 0.03 red, so less than half of a percent uh, drop. So we've got a quiet market open. Despite a pre-market that was looking really good, in market, the directional bias, uh, still long bias, but it's not going anywhere yet. Our trend is down at 0 0.6, but climbing. But we're still in a bullish territory in the market. So as an active trader, you're looking for where's the money? Where's the emerging breakouts? I like this Micron chart. I like the CRC chart. Let's see if any on my main portfolio list are doing anything. That looks horrible. You're fired. Let's see. GE. GE is bringing good things to life. It looks pretty healthy. Not a lot of range in it, but this would be a good candidate for a swing trade up in new highs, say over 1070, a straight momentum play. It's got a nice open range breakout Friday, a climb in, closing at the day's high, which is bullish, a small gap run up today. Not enough range, though, to be worthwhile for a day trade because the previous day's trading range is just under 40 cents. So unless you're trading thousands of shares, which I wouldn't advocate. Uh, this would be better suited for a swing trade than for a day trade. And I, I will make that an official call, 1070 long in GE for a swing trade, 10.7, that's your 12. Looks like you could take a shot for a day trade too, but it's probably going to run to like 1090 or something today before slowing down. So probably better for a swing trade. We see what's lighting it up here in our screen. You guys still looks good. And now we patiently wait to see who the heck takes off. WMGI is the most active and UGAS is second most. And Gush, my oil long pick that I mentioned earlier, is the third place. I'm looking at my Fidelity, the leaderboard scan to see what's, what's moving. But so far, the market's kind of quiet, which, by the way, is typical for Monday. Mondays and Fridays are generally the quietest, lowest volatility. Uh, lowest VIX uh, days to trade. So <laughs> at least it's a good time to get familiar with my trading process, the workstation, the layout, and the alerts. And then we just follow up and see where they go from here. Micron continues to look good. 49.7 is where I will buy it. I just got a nickel, it's five shares, but we'll see if it breaks north of 49.7. Nice uptrend continuation pattern, not yet at my long trigger, but knocking on the door, it's almost there. We go long in MU if it gets over 49.7. Pins, the short trigger is 20.30, that hit. Bounced a little bit, it's kind of chopping around. The CEI is trying to find support. RDHL continues on down. 780 the short. Use a break even cover stop though in case this is a bounce right now. And CRC is poised for breakout. So now we just wait. It's a slow Monday, right? I was hoping our market would be a little hotter based on the futures, but it's still relatively flat at 0, 0.0. Two. <laughs> so like the definition of a flat market starting to break out to new highs. So we may see some fireworks coming up in just a minute. I like the green candles here. I like it better if we break north of 30820, right? You know, as a trader, it's always important to, you know, if you want to profit from the markets, you need to identify the strongest charts, which I do here for you, but also how to manage your entries and your exits and your share size, things like timing, pattern recognition skills, uh, and trade management are really important. So we'll see where things head. All right, Rich. Hey, good to hear it, Jim. I don't cover Facebook because I try and keep things affordable in terms of the price of stuff we cover, but congrats if you did good on Facebook. That's a good chart, but I don't trade things on 200 bucks a share. But that was a good example, though. 
highlights a really good pattern of a gap continuation and then a reversal now, right? So, uh, but yeah, ran up nicely. It's a good run. Had a nice little quick, quick pop and drop there. If you look at the biggest percent change instruments so far on the day from our watch list, that'd be CRC, the long triggers up at 930. This thing was very actively traded pre-market. It didn't go anywhere, but now it's starting to. So if it breaks over 930, that would be a good play, likely. The next trigger is We're patiently waiting here for something to run. You guys looks good. So you guys and CRC look to be the two most promising charts so far. Our VXX is up sharply, right? 0.6%. Let's do a straight Momo play on this 1880. So the market looks like it's in distress and may sell down a bit, given the fact that our VIX ETN is starting to break out to new highs. So tighten up a trigger on this guy. Again, 1880 is not a brilliant entry because it's right under the previous day's low, which is resistance. But given the VIX instruments do have volatility, it's better to get into these guys early rather than late after breakout. You buy the dip, sell the rip in VXX, TVIX, and UVXY. So ready to lock and load on VXX if he keeps going up. Same deal on TVIX, right? S triple Q still down in the muck. Not really worthy of an entry yet until it gets north of 2720. One of the key learning points about the inverse instruments, particularly the VIX ETNs, is that when they run, they run very sharp and very fast. And the way to trade those successfully that, that I found. My biggest winning days have been trading things like TVIX, you know, $1,000 a day, $800 a day, uh, is I've got a rack of two or three orders set up ahead of time with buy stop limits. Uh, so that way when it runs, I get automatically filled. And then, you know, I manage the exit with trailing stops or hard stops after the fill. So, but the thing is you got to have your order set up ahead of time because when they decide to run, it's just a minute or two and they run up without you if you don't already have your orders in. So that's a helpful tip a lot of different types of trade setups. And see the S&P is dropping here, but the trend is going back down, which is bullish. So that's a little divergent. The trend can often act as a lead indicator for the SPY. And so far it looks very long bias, which doesn't bode well for bounces and inverses. Making those kind of relationships in your mind is something I like to teach everybody here. We like to do a very focused What's worth trading and where to trade it? That's kind of giving you the fish and the icing on the cake. But the main thing I want you to identify is relationships and how are things like the market internals, like the trend related to specific price action breakouts or pivots. So if we're trading a breakout in something like T triple Q that takes out new highs or pivot in S triple Q that bounces off the lows, those are good volatile instruments. So where are the rest of these guys going? It's still kind of a quiet Monday. RDHL, be ready for a bounce at 8.30. I said use a break even exit at the 7.80, so that would have hit long trigger this chart if it bounces over 8.30. Again, there's nothing magic about 8.30. You could try it 8.10 or 8.20 or 8.40. The main thing is we're going to go along somewhere over the whole number. Looks like I got a fill in Micron. Okay. Well, that's cute. Micron took out the 0.7 finally. We'll see if it's able to keep running. And you know, the great thing is I'm only doing five shares, so I don't care whether it goes up or down. You want to start off your life as a day trader in the whole, I don't care, I'm not worried because I'm not risking thousands of shares on risky stock. Uh, that makes sense, right? Start off small. 5, 10, 20 shares. That way you don't sweat it. 
it's like I tell my family, don't sweat the small stuff. And by the way, almost everything is small stuff, you know, except your time and your health, right? Those are two critical things, but everything else, eh, take a shot. CRC in the process of taking out new highs. Bye, bye, bye. Channeling Kramer here. Bye, bye, bye. We'll see if it breaks north at 930. Looks good, though. That was the most active pre-market instrument. We'll see if this guy lifts on up to new highs. Another quick tip for all of you who are new, and we got so many new folks here. Wow, we're up. A lot of people. Hey, one thing that you and see, I keep you guys out of trouble, the fake out, right? The false breakout, right? Goes up to just under my trigger, actually a dime under my trigger, and pulls back. Uh, what you want to do is consider not only the hectic open range breakout, which is kind of like the tip of the sword and the most experienced trader approach, but you may want to adopt a more leisurely intraday swing trading approach, where it's still swing trading, but you put on small shades. The beauty about that approach is you can leverage all day long moves and you don't have to have the reflexes of a video game kid, you know, trying to play Halo or something, or Call of Duty or Battlefield, if they still make those, or Assassin's Creed or whatnot, all great games. But you don't have to have the reflexes of a video game player to make uh, really good trades. If you put on the trades sometime between, say, 9.30 and 10, maybe 10.30, and then let it ride all day and then close it out at 3.30 or 4 in the afternoon. So you don't have to have split-second timing skills. And I teach how to do intraday swing trading. And I make the calls, too, in terms of which instruments would be good for that as a member here at the Trading the Open Room. I've listened very carefully to all the suggestions for improvement people have made over the years and continue to work on making this room the premium place for active smart stock and ETF day traders. So CRC continues on up. Nine thirty is the long, and I've got an order to buy all the five shares up there. Micron long is good. Now, if I were a large size, I'd use a stop at break even, right, at the 49.7. And next long would be somewhere over 50, say 50.2. Starting to pull back into its little shake and bake here. You guys taking out new highs? Be ready for it. The long call on UGAZ is to go long if it gets over 1960. And I give you all these specific triggers identified ahead of time so that you've got time to put together your trading plan and have more than enough time to develop an intelligent step-by-step -step, uh, entry and exit method uh, based on the triggers that you, know, you can follow along with in market at a more leisurely pace and trying to be on the edge of your seat and scramble a hockey and thousand. No, don't do that. BXX up nicely. It's almost up at a percentage point. 0.8 off the open, right? By the way, if your percentages don't agree with mine, it's simply because you don't have your percent calculated to compute change from open like I do. The default for most charting platforms is more for investors and maybe swing traders. For day traders, you have to have your percentages from open so that you see relative strength. You know, the one, because they all start off at zero using that approach at 930, which is great because then you can see who the strongest momentum players are uh, continuously. And that's another advantage to being here at Trading the Open. I teach you guys how to do that uh, as we go through these things. Market looks like it's trying to drop here. Now it's 0.08 down. The trend is still long bias though, so that's divergent signals. Got a little bit of weakness in the market here, but the trend is still a very long bias trend way down at 0.58. So this is the visual representation of the arms index, and this is the tape, the ticker tape of the trend. If the trend is under one, it's a long bias market. If it's over one, it's a short bias market. So we're still a long bias market despite a little bit of weakness here lately. But hey, we take shots at what's moving. VXX is now climbing up over that 1880 long trigger. It's moving on up. To the east side, da, 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 moving on up. Let's see if it's able to keep going. Who else is in play here? 8.30 is along for that. That hasn't hit. 
Pin's kind of quiet. U.S. Steel going nowhere. AMD still kind of quiet. Long trigger, and that's 35.6. The short trigger is 34.8. Neither one's hit. Lift was up and down. Micron coming back to the entry, which is 49.7. Next long will be up over 50.20. Still in an uptrend, so it still looks healthy. CRC, the long trigger is 9.3. We're currently at just over the 9, so CRC looks healthy if it gets over the 9.30. Again, that would be fine for an intraday swing trade. You don't have to scalp in and out of it. CEI, of course, the one I didn't put a trigger on is the one that's starting to run, but it's not too late. Trade or no trade, hit it or quit it, which way does it run? Inquiring minds want to know. Game on. Let's do 4.6. Preferably after a pullback or a slowdown near 4.50, right? Or we'll over short if it gets down to 4.20. One thing I want to do is, you know, speed up your learning curve, and that's why I post short triggers as well. Even if you don't have any intention of shorting, or if, like, what I'm trading out of my SEP hour, you can't short, uh, it's still worth learning from because you get good entry triggers, and you can manage your entries and exits and learn how to trade pivots. After, say, a short drop, something crashes and burns and then starts to bounce. Like, say, this guy. RDHL, the long trigger is at 8.30, and that has not yet hit, but if RDHL comes back to life over here, it'd be a long. In the meantime, that's yeah, still dropping. VXX is now up over 1%. Houston, we have liftoff, baby. Boom, shakalaka. Let's see if it keeps going up. 19.10 would be your next long trigger. Another thing that I'm very conscientious about doing is giving both primary and secondary entry triggers. In case you don't feel like taking the first one or you just don't have time because you're off following something else, I will usually give you a secondary entry trigger as well. And that's one benefit here trading open is I cover the very strongest charts so frequently they will run, as you, those of you who have been with me for years uh, know, uh, they'll frequently run not only through the first or second but even a third entry trigger. So you get multiple chances to make a winning trade, not just the first one. Either you got in or, or, you, or too bad. Uh, you you know you missed it. That's not the case here. I like to be very selective in picking the charts that have the best potential, and so that way, let's say this guy shakes and bakes and then skyrockets on up again, hit it again at 1910. Well, thanks for that. It's up on JD. That one along with AMD and Micron tend to run together, and Momo for that matter too. Traders asking about JD. Let me know if y'all have any favorite charts you want me to pull up. Yeah, that's a good one. Dang it, we missed it. I'd go short under 32.8 on this chart. This is a setup for a rollover because it ran all the way up to the whole number 33, knocked on the door, knock, 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 knock. But it can't come in, right? It didn't, it failed, break out over 33. Now you'd still hit this long over, say, 33.20. So 33.2 would be a directional volatility breakout continuation. But because it already ran up to the whole number, it may do a mean reversion pullback down to the 32 and a half. So but yeah, that's absolutely worth trading. Good call. That's one that we cover regularly as well here. And by the way, it's an interesting phenomenon that JD, MU, AMD, and MOMO, Micron, or MOMO, uh, tend to all, when one goes up, they, they all tend to go up. I understand Micron and AMD because they're both chip makers, but it's interesting. I don't know what sector JD's in offhand, but it also runs up nicely. So good comment, thanks. JD's worth a shot if it either rolls down short. Or
or breaks out to a new long. Oftentimes, one thing that I teach also is to use the five and 10 minute candlestick charts to see if we have a shooting star or bearish engulfing or a doji or something that tells us we have some uncertainty. I don't see evidence of either of those on this chart yet. But looking at multiple time frames on the candlestick chart can often reveal whether or not a pattern is exhausted and about ready to roll down, like this guy looks like he wants to, or if it's going to be a continuation play. In this instance, because we have a we do not have a bearish upper candle, the odds of a 32H short would be less than if we did have a shooting star or bearish engulfing. So the deployment of that intelligence into a trading decision is you may still take the shot, but lighter share size and play it tighter. It all adds up, right? It's all an intelligence sequence of what you're looking for. Hey, thanks, Phil. T-W-O-U and Steve, P-G-N-Y. Let's take a look. Oftentimes, some of the best ideas come from you folks, and that's why I like having so many hundreds of folks in the room, is 350 hits are better than one. Yeah, that's a good chart, a nice swoop up. The volume, though, isn't really good, so the spreads are going to be wide, right? So I wouldn't trade that for a day trade, but it would be worth a shot for a swing trade over 20, say 2020. So look at the spread. The spread's four cents, right? 36 to 40. So that's going to cost you a dime in and out. So I wouldn't day trade it because it's a little pricey. Uh, but for a swing trade, it's a good chart, right? If it takes out 2020. And oftentimes deciding what type of trade a specific chart makes more sense for is one of the keys to success in doing this. Is it worth trading? Absolutely, it's a great chart. Is it worth day trading? Nah, maybe not so much because it's got a big spread. And the volume's a little thin. So, yeah, but yeah, it's worth a shot somewhere north of 2020. Another one, TW. I think that one's a little pricey if memory serves, but let's pull that up. No, no, that's fine. Maybe it used to be higher. Yeah, thanks, folks. I appreciate that. I will put those on the radar. Keep an eye on our inverses. Market is selling down. Long VXX and TVX. Anywhere in here is good. CEI trying to bounce, not yet at 4.6. CRC, the long trigger is 9.30. It's just about ready to break over that, so do keep an eye on CRC. JD, the short trigger is 32.8, so if it gets under 32.8, we go short. Micron's slowing down. See, so ran up to just under the 50 before a pullback. Lift was up and down. Lift, that would be a stop because 43.7, sorry about that. That one was a false breakout. It pulled back. We'll see where it goes. Pins is trying to bounce. Use 20.7. So basically, you know, you've got some really good charts and good trade ideas. It's a Monday, so things are kind of quiet so far today. We'll see which way they run. Market itself is only point, it's red now, 0.13%. S triple Q and VXX, they're both really oversold. And VXX is in the money now, so booyah. 1880s in the money, hit it or quit it. Next long is 1910. Did I buy some TVEX? Where is my long trade for TVEX? And if buy 50 at 860, so. I don't know offhand where that's at. 
I love TVX when it runs. Our inverse ETNs look especially good today. Now I got a long order in at 860. I'm still in 150 shares underwater in this guy. It's coming back to for swing trade. That looks really strong though for it. So 860. Oftentimes though the problem with TVIX is uh, you seldom want to buy the breakout because often that's it does a breakout. The pattern in the VIX ETNs is uh, initial open range small breakout, which is a fake out. Then it often drops under the previous low. Uh, and then goes down further, and then it bounces later in the session, and that's usually the best play for long, as opposed to an ORB breakout. But this looks really good. It's got good superior volume. It's got a recovery above the previous day's close now, which will start drawing an algorithmic high-frequency trading software. Rise of the machines, right? We're above the previous day's close, so for that reason, TVIX looking good. If you zoom in on the one-day chart, it looks even better. Now the selling pressure is likely to slow down momentarily. So VXX trail stop at break even at the 1880. TVIX my long is at the 60, right? Yeah, I've got an order to just buy 50 shares at 8.6. So I will share that alert with you here. I wasn't too optimistic about TVIX doing anything, but hey, it surprised me today. Up three percentage points already. I can't believe it's under $10 a share. It's like somebody said, there's two key notes, two key important factors. The last time the VIX was down this low was right before the big sell-off. The VIX is down at 1213. Last time it was that low occurred right before an epic sell-off, right? Similar to our current market where the market's taking on new highs. People are all excited about, hey, the market's going long. And then fake out, psych, and the market crashes. Uh, keep an eye on TVIX, 860 is going to be your first long, and 910, actually 880 would be fine too, but 910 would be the secondary major long. The short trigger, I wouldn't short it unless it loses the 8 down at 790. So my long trigger is up here, and the reason I set it there is as I mentioned in Friday or Saturday's trading week ahead, as we look for engulfing patterns around the last 15 to 30 minutes of the previous day's close. So TVIX is starting to, but has not yet traversed or eclipsed or gone above that little closing range. And that's another valuable technique for using the uh, the uh, two-day chart, as you can see visually, if we are getting above the previous day's low, which is a high-frequency trading algorithmic long signal, uh, or the closing range uh, for the close, which in this case, the close near the low. So that's kind of like the little channel range here, 840 to 850. So my long call is if we break north of 860. But it's going to slow down here a little bit, so that's fine. It's up three percentage points on the day already. I would expect S triple Q to follow suit. 2720 did activate. That's the first long. Second long trigger is 27.4. I don't seem to have any S triple Q. I've got a stop loss on 20 shares at 26.40, which makes sense. I do not have the buy order in for this, I don't think. Nope, so I want to do that 
I want to feed a swing trade on this guy if he breaks north to 27.40 later. Now, so far, it's kind of down here in the muck, so we'll see where it goes. What's more exciting is some of our breakout charts. Micron pulling back a little bit off the 50 hole number. JD pulling, slowing down here near right off the 33 hole number. That guy looks really good, right? CRC looks poised for a breakout. It hasn't really moved a whole lot yet today, but it's in a nice directional uptrend. So 930 is the long signal for this. Hey, right, Rich. Oh, good to hear, Wendy. The pot stocks, CGC and Kronos are going up. Oh, TWL use a new IPO. Okay, thanks. All right, this week we've got heavy earnings releases coming out, so we've got lots of earnings this week, especially in some of the large caps, it may well move the market. So, RDHL 780 had been my short call. It dropped down to the 720 and it's trying to bounce here. Another example of a small cap gap and trap, right? Or gap up that rolled down. I said to go short here and I used a break even. I called the break even cover stop. So that's kind of a scratch. Earliest long for this guy, which may well be a good one later in the session, would be for 8.30. By the way, you can use these alerts all day long because frequently things that don't hit a long trigger during the first hour may hit later in the session, especially after maybe 3 o'clock or so. You get a short squeeze into the close, and oftentimes you get a nice squeeze up between 3.30 and 4 in a lot of instruments. So, so far, it's been a relatively quiet Monday. The market's less than a tenth of a percentage changed. So far, a little bit red, but it's still just kind of perched up here, a quiet Monday morning in the stock market. TVIX trying to get its bounce on, 880s, the earliest there. May want to follow this guy to see where he goes. VXX 1880 was the long, and it's starting to work out, but use a break-even stop, because if it rolls back down, you want that to be a cost-free experience, which is great. You can use break-even stops without commissions if you're in the U.S. and using a commission-free broker. So UWT, I still like it. It's poised for a move to the upside. 1220 is a long call for that one. So far, TVIX looks pretty good. I cover TVIX every single day because I trade it daily, uh, and it looks pretty healthy, right? It's starting to bounce a little bit. It's such a big turnout today. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. So far, I think uh, just the... Looks like the Micron started to run up, but starting to pull back just a bit. If you, like me, share the sentiment that the market may be due for a big epic sell-off, despite all the rosy markets up to new highs, uh, you do want to cover the inverse instruments, which I cover every day for you, uh, notably TVIX and SQQ are my two favorites. SOXS, more for a swing trade. The semiconductor is short, and SPXL is okay for a swing trade, but not so much for day trade because volume and liquidity isn't there. But SOXS, the semiconductor short, uh, not up at new highs yet. Typically, you don't want to try and play bounces here. It's, that's more a dead cat bounce. I mean, it's like, hey, wake me if it gets over 28, right? I like TVIX much better. My favorite thing to go long in and then when the market goes short. I'll be back in just a minute. I got to go down the hallway here. Let me know if any questions, post questions. We'll wrap up in about 15 minutes or whenever TVIX slows down. I love TVIX. I just I have a love affair with this thing, a love hate affair. When it's right, it makes me a lot of money. When I'm wrong, it costs me money. So, anyway, it looks healthy here. Uh, do feel free to post a question or two, any question you want, or if you have a ticker of a chart you'd like me to pull up. Let me know. I'll be back in just a minute here.
All right, and we're back. And you can see the trend is still trying to climb, but it's not over one yet. So it really doesn't confirm putting on size in the inverse instruments. You know, the main lesson learned for both swing and day trades is go long mostly when stuff is above the previous day's high. That's rule number one for epic longs. Bounce longs, much riskier. But hey, it's starting to work out. So congrats to anyone who's in. And we did engulf the previous day's closing range, but because we're getting kind of late here in the session at 1020, we may see a reversal. So let's go through our charts and see where we're at. Due to contango, which means kind of like price decay due to how the contracts roll over, you don't want to stay long in the VIX ETNs longer than two or three months for a swing trade in general. Uh, you may want to hedge with other inverse instruments like SQQ and SOXS and SPXL, which are my favorites. Let me turn the webcam back on here. A lot of good questions, thanks. I will answer all of them. All right, let's take a look at our charts. Question from Deanna, do I think TVX will have a substantial bounce up in the next 30 days? I hope so. Uh, I'm only in 150 shares. I've been scaling out of it, but it looks way overdone on the longer term chart. If you take a look at the <coughs> the daily, that looks way the heck oversold, right? This time last year, it had been 80 bucks a share. Now, eight. So anyway, it's ran down. The only thing that we can go off of is and as a trader, it really makes sense, and I teach this, is price projection. How far did a trend last the last time before it reversed? And use that as your best estimate for the next case. So this, this guy ran down for you know a couple months before it bounced. This time it ran down a month before it bounced. This time it's down a month. So it's due for a bounce, uh, but I can't predict. I just react. And the way to react, especially when you're building a swing trade, is to scale into things that are up at new two-day highs. So if we take a look through some of these charts, where are they going? JD's headed higher, looks like. CRC still quietly grinding up to new highs. That guy's kind of up and down. <coughs> Looking to see which of these are most likely candidates for the next move, right? Which one's may either be good for bounces or breakouts. And it's a Monday, which is typically the one of the two most quiet, least tradable days of the, the week. You can see our S&P is agreeing with that by not going anywhere. It's just flat as F market, right? Flat market day today, 0.07%. But we have some good charts, I mean, some good candidates. One thing that I find in our current markets is that sometimes you get a quiet open, but then you get a hot close, either up or down. So because the VIX instruments are up slightly today, actually quite a bit for it, anything over 2%, by the way, anything, my rule of thumb is anytime anything has moved at least two percentage points and it's after 10 o'clock, that's relatively significant in terms of a price action move. So. We can see both VXX and TVIX are up a couple of percentage points so far today. So that tells me that we may well see some selling pressure later in the day, despite the fact that the market gapped up, we saw a pop in the VIX today. So that's significant. The question is, does it hold? Or does it give it back and roll back down? So either way, we're ready for it. But we got an initial short bias market read slightly just off of half a percentage point. So not much going on on a quiet Monday in the market. Anyway, I'd love to hear your questions. If we have other questions, let's see. Can I, not sure what the question is, Steve, can I un-BKU the stock symbols? Hey, Anise, L-A-N-C, sure, let's pull it up. Now, as a rule of thumb, you want to trade for day trades, you, swing trading, I like things at least a million shares of volume. Day trading, I like at least 15,000 shares a minute. The low float instruments are dangerous because they get circuit breaker halted and you got these Yahoo kids out there putting on thousands of shares and then telling their chat room, 
buy it now, I'm in long. And then everybody trips over themselves trying to get in and then get back out before everybody sells it. I don't do that. You don't want to do that. You want for day trading charts, at least a one point previous day's range, 15,000 shares a minute and some emerging new sign of strength, right? That one's too expensive. And we only cover things no more than $50 a share here, $60 at the most. So uh, I wouldn't trade that because both the volume is too thin. This would be horrible for day trading. One should never in their life day trade LANC because the, the spread's going to kill you, right? You got a 50 cent spread because the volume's too thin, it then costs too much, and it's not a strong directional breakout. It's got a little bit of a breakout lately, but this would be a horribly dangerous type of chart you would not want to trade. And it's fine to ask me about those. I'll give you the specific critique on which charts are, you know, better candidates for good, good fodder for entries. Micron's chopping around here near my 49.7 entry. I'm still long. It's not going anywhere. Not going anywhere yet. Hey, Rich. Yeah, I wouldn't take a shot of lift again. Let's see. Pins still kind of choppy. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Caesars was pretty good earlier, I remember. And thanks, Sunise, about race. Yeah, sure thing, man. Yeah. But test it out. I mean, maybe you do great with $200 stocks. They're so great. I just tested out so many different strategies. Today's kind of a, a quiet market. Because of the China exposure, uh, when and MGM may not be great near-term candidates in the gaming sector. Caesar, that doesn't have any volatility, so I wouldn't trade that. Let's take a look at race. You guys are giving me tickers to pull up here. Let's take a look. Now, we want things under $70 a share. So things like that are great for day trading. JD is one of our longtime favorites. It's in my long-term list here. JD, Micron, and AMD. The other one that travels like the Three Musketeers with it oftentimes is Momo. And Momo looks good too, right? I just happen to know that. Those four tend to track together. AMD and Micron, I get because they're chip makers, but also JD and Momo. I don't even know what JD and Momo do, so they might be chip, chip maker related as well. But all four of those tend to move together and provide really good trading opportunities when they're up at a two-day high like this. So these are the type of charts I want to focus on. Things with range, volume, directional volatility, and success, right? That makes sense to trade. So good stuff. And he's, how much is WB per share? Is it over 70 a share? I like charts like this because they've got really good directional move, right? This guy ran from 35 to 36.80. As a rule of thumb, it's a good idea to wait till at least 20 cents above, around 20 cents actually above a whole number. So I wouldn't buy it here at 3680. I'd wait for a pullback and then a resumption of the trend if it's able to get over 3720. But because it's ran as far today as it did in the previous day, it may well slow down and this may be it for the day and may, may quiet down. It's another benefit or an advantage to using the two day chart. And see, so you notice I'm not doing any big sales pitch here. For limited time only, you too can blah, 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 blah. I'm not that guy. I don't do that. If you want to join my live room, it's at tradingopen.com. And if you don't, don't let the doorknob hit you on the way out. I'll still eat steak and lobster. I don't care. I run this business because I like to share what I learn. It's fun. Anyway, previous day's range is about yay tall. It's ran about as far today. The overriding factor that makes for potential for it to keep going up is the volume is higher today. So it's important to visually compare today's volume versus the same time frame in the previous day, in addition to the average true range or the previous day's trading range. So are we have we run as far today as we ran yesterday or Friday? Yes, we did. But the volume is kind of a override or it says we may well be good for more. 
So if it breaks over 37, maybe worth a shot. Oh, hey, Steve. Oh, thanks, Anise. I could pull that up then at 52. Let's see. Let me read it. That's OXY or DXY. It looks like OXY. The print on the administrator control for the chat box for GoToWebinar is little tiny. It's like eight points. I got to squint. Let's see. OXY. Well, that's a rock star chart. That's great. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. That's a smart chart. That's actually the best chart of the day you've seen so far. So thanks. So many smart people here. That's what it's all about, folks, is teamwork. Now, the question is, you know, is it late cycle breakout and too late to take a shot? I'd, I'd hit it at 4440. It's still early cycle enough to, but that's a perfect chart. That's really good. Thank you. I will actually add that to my long term list, too. Great chart. And I know you've been with me for years, so that's great to, great to see folks who've been with me you know, are able to pick up there. But yeah, is that worth, that's actually worth trading all week probably. So we'll we'll follow that one. OXY is great. That's a great chart. 44.40 would be the long signal. And I wouldn't short this chart because it looks so strong. It's got a 45 degree angle breakout, minor gap continuation. This is a good example of a perfect chart pattern for day trading because it had the range, a nice clean focus chart on Friday, a nice small, not too extended gap up today. And it just kept running up out of the gate. So good chart, man. Thanks. Somebody who's new here. Let's asking about Anise. Let's see. I think you're new. WB. Is that worth trading? Maybe for a swing trade. But see, compare and contrast the profit potential of that chart for a day trade versus, say, the OXY chart. The Warner Brothers, I think that's WB, might be good for a swing trade over the 53. Uh, again, not trading recommendations, but just what I'd look at. But this is a much better chart for day trading because of how clean and focused the line is uh, and the directional volatility. Would be, it would have been really hard to get shaken out on this chart because of how strong it is. And it's instead of straight up, it's a nice 45 degree angle breakout. So great chart. Yeah, Steve say market seems like it's in runaway bullish mode. It is trying to, but today it's gone nowhere. I mean, it gapped up free market, but that was the big move. And that's something we've seen a lot in our current market conditions is the stock market itself often will gap up or down. Lately, it's where it gaps up, but it just gaps and goes sideways or gaps and goes nowhere. The nowhere market. So it'd be in runaway bullish mode if it breaks new high resistance, which it may well do later in the session, somewhere north of 308.20. That would make for a good runaway breakout. But for now, it's kind of like dog paddling, just holding steady. I like to dog paddle when I stay at the Bellagio, when I stay at the there and I go down to the pools. And a quick tip for those who are fellow Bellagio uh, guests, uh, it's good to go to the, the small pools with the fountains in the far back. Uh, the, the, they've got lots of pools. There's a, the biggest pool right there on the left. There's another big pool on the right and a smaller pool on the left. But in the far back, they've got these big water fountain pools. And it's fun to dog paddle in the pools at Bellagio it's a, and swim too. So you may want to see my YouTube videos for me at the B. They just sold Bellagio $4 billion to Blackstone. I love that property. Anyway, but the S&P, to your point, yeah, you're right. It's runaway bullish mode pattern. You're absolutely correct. But intraday, that hasn't done much. And in fact, it's our inverses that have started to lift up. So for that reason, we may see a reversal. Any, if not today, later in the week, we may see a reversal and these guys may pop. So be ready for them. All right, well, we're gonna wrap up here soon. Let me see if any other questions. And I know, Don, the GE was okay for a swing trade, but it's too, narrow range for a day trade. For day trades, you really want charts like this one was fine or OXY where you've got a nice gap and go runner. That's a good chart for a day trade. That's a perfect chart for a day trade. 
compare and contrast, as I used to say when I used to be faculty for various universities. Come on, GE. GE looks good too. Nice breakout runner, but I would this would be more for a swing trade because the previous day's trading range on Friday, you can see it's just 10 to 1040. So it's likely to slow down here somewhere by 11. So I would I would swing trade, but I wouldn't day trade this one because the profit potential is only maybe 30 cents or so. Always check the total range on the right side of a chart. Make sure that there's at least a couple of points to work with. So this guy, the range is 10 to 1080. So it's only got 80 cents. It's a great chart though, a great looking chart. However, trading is all about choices, right? I mean, you can take a shot at both of them. I often will do that, but this OXY chart, it's got a range of 40 to 44. So it's got a four point range. Now, technically the percentage ranges would be about the same at 10 point. Anyway, the point is this is cleaner and has a bigger range, but yeah, they're both good charts. I like them both. So a question from Steve G. Can I un-BKUE the stock symbols, please? I don't know what un-BKUE means, but let me know what you're talking about. In the meantime, JD is racing a new high of day breakout. Another good chart. So these are the kind of charts I like to cover in the live room for everybody, ones that have more consistency than the cheap three dollar stocks and just trade lighter share size if you know budgets a concern is no shame in that it's a much smarter i think to trade even a hundred shares of this than a thousand shares with three dollar stock for the same capital outlay i like to teach gap continuations as i have for 21 years and i hope that it helps and uh, you know charts that make sense to trade so let me know if any questions if not it's been a sincere pleasure and honor to have so many of you here if you'd like to join my room you can do the trial for just 47 bucks for a whole month at tradingtheopen.com. Or if you're sold and you're coming back and you know how good it is, then you may want to take advantage of the year special at just $9.97 for all of my alert services. Uh, the All Access Pass is on sale now through a week, two weeks from Sunday, from yesterday. So tradingtheopen.com, that's where to sign up. And uh, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Hopefully it's a more intelligent, I like to run this much like I used to do my live day trading uh, seminars for the market makers and specialists and, and retail traders who used to come and see me at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas uh, and in New York when I speak at the Money Show events uh, and, and elsewhere. Uh, so I like to run these very much like a professional day trading seminar where I do a lot of detailed instruction as you saw today, right? Very honest, very step by step, not a I'm long 3,000 shares of a $2 stock. No, that's for morons. I'm a much more intelligent teacher, and I hope that I can help you guys to, and ladies turn the corner and make bigger winning trades more often. So take care, and I'll hopefully see you in the room. Well, thanks, Mike, saying thanks for opening the room. Great learning experience. Thanks, folks. Thanks. That's great. Hey, thanks, Joseph. Hey, Don. Steve saying I'm not a pot stock guy. I am. I've got... I'm in, I'm in most of them, really dinky shares though, like MJ and Canopy Growth and that doesn't look good. That doesn't look good. Two of you are mentioning pot stocks. I don't see it. Tilray doesn't look good. The MJ ETF, just marginal if it breaks 20. I don't see it in the pot stocks yet, but they may show some strength. I like oil, though. If UWT finally decides it wants to wake that wake the F up, it looks like a really nice breakout candidate over 12. Remember, I called this guy 1050 for everybody a few months ago for a swing trade. That's kind of choppy.
but oil may be good for a bounce. It's been in a directional uptrend the last few months, but anyway, that's a nice breakout chart. That would be a good candidate for an intraday swing trade. And I always like to call out the kind of trade it is. Is it an open range breakout, quick momentum hit and run runner like, for example, you know, the JD chart's a good example of that. OXY is an even better chart. That would be good for an open range breakout trade of, you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes or something like that. Usually hit and run day trading to us old timers, usually it's anywhere from three to eight minutes on size. But the more experience I get, the more I realize it's, uh, it's a lot less work and potentially a lot more profit to do intraday swing trades. So you kind of buy it early in the morning somewhere, put a stop under the low, come back at 3.30, cash it in and you're done, right? So that's what you wanna focus on. And often too on things that have run up for us, I will highlight, I'll say take profit now or take a stop now, depending on the trade. Uh, I'll say sell half now, trail a stop at break even on the rest. Really working hard here to give you folks. But does everyone see why, and thanks again for uh, to Steve for that's up on this OXY chart. Does everyone see why this kind of chart is infinitely smarter to trade than the low float under $10 crappy stocks? Because you're not gonna get this kind of consistency and ease of trading out of the cheap stocks that do the pop and drop one hit wonders. That's, you know, like I say, disturbing trend of a bunch of social media guys who've only been running their companies like five or six years are out there. They all have in common, they think that day trading is trading thousands of shares of under $10 low float momentum stocks. They run up 20 cents or something. And you gotta have split second timing. That's the worst way to day trade. That's the stupidest thing to trade. This is the smartest kind of chart to trade. And smart people like Steve and others uh, who post these kind of uh, charts, you know, for us, so I appreciate it. But anyway, that's the kind of chart a smart person trades because your odds of success are so much better. It's got continuity, it's got consistency. Like dealing with people, you want to deal with honest people, right? And you want honest, what I call honest charts or clean charts that are much easier to trade than the haphazard pop and drop charts, so. See the cheap stocks, it's kind of fool's gold. It's much small, smarter to trade small shares of this than say large shares of that, right? Oh, it's cheap, it's only $4 a share. It's choppy as F, right? Good luck trading something like this. You're not gonna make it with those kind of charts. That doesn't do it. it doesn't blow my hair back. That kind of chart's much better. If you do trade cheap charts, at least make sure they got a continuous trend like CRC. Still hasn't hit our long trigger, but it's about to. Long alert is imminent. Ding, 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 ding. It's way late though. Normally we try and get done by 1030, but anyway, it's a late market. Things are going slowly. Let me know if any other questions, otherwise I'll wrap up. All right, I don't look at long-term support or resistance. As a day trader, all you look at is the previous day's support and resistance. We don't care so much about the 90 day or the one year chart because uh, for swing trading, you do. For swing trading, we absolutely wanna look at longer term charts as well. Uh, but for intraday trading, really all you need is the current day's pattern and the previous day's open, high, low, close, mainly the previous day's high and low, uh, and then trade on charts like this that are above the previous day's high. And that's good for swing trades as well. After all these years, can't believe I'll be 56 years old in January. I'm getting old, but I've learned a lot. So having done well over 7,000 real money trades this year, not so much today, just that Micron breakout, I think was the only one that hit so far. It's been a quiet morning, but that's a wonderful chart. So those are the kind of charts we like to focus on because they're easier to trade. They're smarter to trade. They're safe, I don't know if the word safe is right, but they're potentially safer to trade than the pop and drop $3 stocks. And I like to teach you folks also the entry and exit skills and the timing skills and the trade management. So anyway, I hope that I've earned your trust or at least your interest and you may wanna consider joining me at the live room. It's no BS, it's honest, it's friendly. You can bring questions and I'm here to help as a friend and a colleague and a coach and 
I've been you know, trading full time since 99, so it's over two decades now. What a run. Let's see what else do I have to share? I think that's about it. The other thing that I cover that I'll be doing a lot more is that our ETF arbitrage approach where you're looking at uh, trades and instruments that go against each other, you know, like uh, TQQ versus SQQ or UWT versus DWT. But anyway, and this was even back as of August, I, I did thousands of real money trades. Look at the amount of money I spent in commissions over the past year, 33K. I wish they had done the no commission thing a year ago, right? But hey, it's, it's all good. And I like to illustrate real trade examples and with P&L proof, both wins and stops. These are the kind of skills we, I'm not gonna read all this stuff, but I like to give you a well-rounded trading approach that's very professional. That goes A to Z for things like scanning, market profiling, uh, entry triggers, your daily plan based on pre-market futures, pattern recognition, trade management, timing, tape reading, and the rest of it. But I am Ken Calhoun, the original university, day trading university, and this is uh, for my trading the open. You can see I created the, the site and the room back in the year 2000, celebrating our now our 20th year anniversary. So been around the block a few times, and hopefully I can share with you what works. Never underestimate the power of the force. Psh, Luke, I am your father. Chewie, get us out of here. No, channeling too much Star Wars. I like the, I like the Princess Bride, actually. But the point is, we're up in new highs. So it's inconceivable that you'd be anywhere else. So make sure that you join tradingopen.com. I'd love to have you as a member and, you know, try it out for a month for just 47 bucks and, uh, it's it's non-recurring. It's with PayPal or Visa MasterCard at tradingopen.com. Or if you want to join up for the year, it's just $9.97, and that gives you both this plus all of my other alert services uh, for just 80 bucks a month. So it's an even better deal. So anyway, yeah, Don, you and me both, man. Yeah. Hey, Josephine. Thanks, Don. I appreciate it. I work hard. Trader saying I'm young, I'm all 65. Yeah, getting old sucks. You have to slow down a little bit. I don't have quite the wind that I used to when I was, uh, you know, playing tenor sax and jazz bands more often. And I'm up here at a mile. Denver is the mile high city. Colorado Springs is over 6,000 feet above. So we're like a mile above a mile high city. So huh, builds the uh, builds the the wind. You get winded easy. And thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. All these kind words scrolling by here. Well, thanks. Help that I can be part of your success as well. So, you know, join up and learn with me. It's the trials. And again, you can, uh, it's fine if you want to retrial it. Normally, I, I ask people that, you know, if you've already done a trial or two or three, Join for once, uh, but it's fine if you want to retrial it. I'm not going to be a hard ass about it. It's only 47 bucks for a whole month with me, which is over 30 hours of training. So it's like a dollar an hour of training. So it's a total bargain. I'm a money show speaker and award-winning stocks and commodities, number one rated author for last year. So I hope that I can share with you something that makes sense. That gets, if I can give you just one or two good ideas, hopefully that makes it all worthwhile. Anyway, let's go ahead and wrap up. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Not that I'm a big fan of the bird. Well, I am actually, but not to where I'd memorize it. Let's see. Anything else running? What else is hot? Let's do a quick status check and an update. See, a lot of these triggers like you guys haven't even hit yet because the market's so quiet. T triple Q sideways, S and P sideways. Wish we had a lot more alerts hit for you, but not not meant to be just as of yet. 
uh, S triple Q, I'd still be long over 2720. I would re enter if you're not in yet, 2720 for a bounce. And again, at the 2740 is perfect for S triple Q. Our UWT looks healthy if it breaks over the 12 later. The long call is 1220. And again, so often I've seen, like, look at the chart Friday. The big move in it was in the afternoon. That's another thing. Characterize the charts. Are they, you know, in the previous session, was it quiet in the morning and then run up or run down in the afternoon? Or did it run up or down in the morning and go sideways the rest of the day? What kind of chart is it? And then use that to help develop a trading plan designed to capitalize on price action moves. So if you want an intelligent, hopefully successful approach to trading, I hope that I can help facilitate that for you, right? I work really hard at this, so. VIX ETNs are still up, still pretty good. Two percentage points on the VXX, four on the TVIX, and UVXY is probably three or something. Anyway, they all look good up at new highs, so keep an eye on these guys. They may be good momentum runners later in the day. They're starting off today very strong, up over 2%, and TVIX up 4%, so despite it being beaten down and opening up at a 52-week low, Oh, by the way, that's a quick parting thought for the VIX ETNs. I found that 100% of the time, the last three times it's they've hit 52-week lows, that's the day to buy because they bounce off their 52-week lows. I know it's kind of opposite of what you'd expect, but that's the, the VIX instruments trade a lot differently than regular equities and other ETFs. So whenever you see a 52-week low in the VIX ETNs, check the last two times at 1280 and 1170. They bounced off their 52-week low. So it was a long play off the 52-week low. So another trick of the trade. You're right, Danny. Yeah, TVIX is at the high of day. Well, let's go ahead and wrap up.